Well, welcome back to Bianchi Law Talk every Sunday at 5 o'clock. I appreciate everybody's support uh, that you've been giving me with these informal videos. And the news media has been on fire. Uh, we've been doing a lot of formal hits, especially on the Law and Crime Network, with some of the most interesting trials. And we have previously discussed Chris Watts. Chris Watts was convicted, had him pled guilty when the prosecutor took the case out of the death penalty to a nationally uh, renowned case of having killed his wife, who was 15 weeks pregnant, and his beautiful children. I kind of try to move over a little bit here so that you can see, uh, you know, these uh, beautiful young ladies. So all these lives uh, were taken by Chris Watts. Again, it was a national sensation. He had denied killing her. He was on TV asking for, you know, please come back. Where are you? We can work things out. It turns out that um, he then gets caught and then eventually gives a statement to the police with his father in the room and basically says that his wife, he saw kill his two children and in a fit of rage, he then killed his wife. So he was not taking, again, responsibility for um, the murder of all of these people. Uh, and then what happened was that afterwards he said he got scared. He took the bodies and then callously dumped the wife into a shallow grave with a blanket over her, but took the two beautiful babies, Bella and Celeste, three and four years old, and stuck them in a drum of crude oil and water, two separate drums. I mean, there's just really a terrible case, like I said, and we really never got the why he did it. Um, again, I've been a little critical of the prosecutor in this case. Um, hello, Michelle and Mark. Great to see you there. Um, you know, because I felt that the prosecutor should have demanded that he give a truthful and accurate statement, especially since he had a paramour, a mistress, if you will. And, and was anybody else involved in this? Why did you do this? And as you heard this sentencing, which is the most riveting sentencing, and I've done murder cases my entire career, the family was so gracious, so decent, but they wanted to know why, the why of it. And I think the prosecutor left a big question mark in their hearts for the rest of uh, eternity, if you will, because now Chris Watts and the girlfriend control the narrative because it wasn't locked down in exchange for taking it out of the death penalty. I personally felt that that was a mistake, although otherwise the prosecution and police did an incredible job at solving this case. But the Chris Watts is the case that's going to keep on giving folks, I've been saying this, you watch. We have two major developments that occurred this week, even after he was sentenced to consecutive life without parole sentences. The first development that we got that we discussed on the Law and Crime Network was the fact that he has now been removed from the prison that he's in to an undisclosed location for safety reasons. Ha <laughs> ha. Go figure. He's in the criminal justice system with prisoners. Prisoners are human beings. There's a hierarchy there. We had Julio Briones uh, recently at the Law and Crime Network talking about how that all works, both with the prisoners and the guards. Chris Watts is no bueno, man. He's not the kind of guy that's going to resonate with the guards and the prisoners, given the brutality of his case. So it is not surprising in the least that he has been removed for security reasons. Like Julio Briones said, it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be in a month from our year or even four years. Prisoners have nothing but time on their hands to get to you if that's what they want to do and get to you, they will eventually. So that was one development in the Chris Watts case. The other development in the case, the prosecutor dumped thousands of pages of discovery to the media. Very unusual move after the case is over with. So we have been crawling through all of these uh, things and you can be assured people are going to be picking up on a lot of investigative things and commenting about this case. But what was particularly compelling was watching the video where he's telling the father, you know, what he did when law enforcement was out of the room, although it was being recorded. And, and you could just see the angst on this father. I mean, his, he, the father lost his son, he knows, is going to be going to jail. He killed his daughter-in-law. The father lost his little grandbabies and all that. Can you imagine? If you have not had a chance, go on a link that I have below here in the Law and Crime Network and listen to me and Sanford Rubenstein, the famed civil rights attorney, uh, discussing this. And I think there's a, a number of shots back and forth with the father. You just see the angst on Chris Watts father's face. Man, this guy just doesn't stop torturing people, but we're going to be learning a lot more about the case. Okay, here's the PSA. Me and my wife, Michelle, who I know is watching right now, um, got into a little bit of a debate about protection of your home. Okay, now when I was prosecutor, this was a big thing. How do you protect your home? Remember, there's two avenues that bad guys and bad girls would go after in terms of your home, both your property 
as well as your personal safety. The argument that we got into, if you will, a discussion, spirit of discussion, was my concern about delivery people that come to our house, whether it's a pizza delivery guy, a Chinese delivery guy, or really any worker that comes to the house. Now, of course, most people are decent, hardworking people, but as prosecutor, maybe I have a little bit of a point of view It's different than others, because I know that the bad guys will try to use access to get to your home in order to quote unquote, case the home for vulnerabilities. So you've got to be cognizant of it. The lighting, if you have an alarm system to make sure that those signs are outside, they know there's an alarm system uh, to make sure that you have a, a secure you know, venue as best as you can do it. You can go online and find a million tips about how to burglarize proof your home. And the reason for this is simple. It's just like the open car, theory and not. If a bad guy's going down a neighborhood and he sees a door that's open and he wants to grab something inside, he, they're inclined to go after the vulnerability that's easier. That is the door that is unlocked as opposed to the door that is locked. So if they're coming to your house and they see that it's dark and there's lots of shrubs and there's places for them to be able to hide from people, either you or law enforcement, these are the kind of things, if they see a pattern of when you're there or you're not there, hey, listen, don't be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn telling people what a great time you and the family are having on vacation. Ah, use some common sense. When you do this, you're broadcasting to the world where you are and where you're not. So be careful, be cognizant of this. And you know what? When we were talking about these uh, pizza delivery guys, whatever, and, and uh, uh, they're hardworking folks. Don't get me wrong. But I am going to, from this point forward, always be the person that answers the door. This may not be politically correct. It may not make sense to some who get easily offended, but I am sorry. The fact of the matter is that the pizza delivery guy looking at the fotch like me here is going to be a hell of a lot less inclined to commit an act of violence upon me as he would my beautiful, beautiful wife and our beautiful, beautiful dog. Holly. So these are the kind of things that we need to do to target harden ourselves and to make sure that when we're away, people have access to the house, take your mail, take your garbage, things of this nature. So go online, um, check it out, because I think with all these new delivery systems that we have, and there are various companies out there where you can get chicken wings if you want, you can go to McDonald's and get it or whatever. Most of the people are doing the hard work, a good job. They try to vet the people. I get that. But listen, just like the chat rooms with kids, bad guys will try to get into that space in order to be able to do bad things. Am I saying be paranoid and not live a full life? I'm not saying that. But I've seen a lot of stupid things that people have done who are good people, smart people. They just didn't take a couple of basic precautions, and it led to some pretty tragic results. So, guys, listen. Thanks for watching Bianchi Law Talk as always. Uh, and Mark for always supporting. And um, Marianne, I see that you're there. And uh, Michelle and all the rest of you that have supported it. If you get an opportunity, I'd love you to share this video. Uh, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Bianchi Law Talk, as well as uh, ask people to join the fan page on Bianchi Law Talk on Facebook. I'll be back next week on Facebook Live at 5 o'clock. And God knows the way the media is moving in the news stories, we will have a lot to talk about. And hopefully it'll have nothing to do anymore with Chris Watts. Have a great week. Bye.